When we want to eat, we go to the store, cook something at home, order food, or go to a restaurant. It's easy for us. But there are still primitive tribes in the world who have to work hard to get their food. They fearlessly hunt elephants, fight with lions, and subdue snakes with their bare hands. It's worth seeing. In this episode, I'll show you how Aboriginal tribes hunt animals and tell you some interesting facts about Aborigines. Let's go! Elephant Our distant ancestors hunted mammoths for meat and warm skins. Many centuries have passed, but little has changed in some parts of the world. African pygmies hunt elephants. They're not mammoths, of course, but I'm sure if these furry giants were not extinct, the pygmies would fight them as well. As a rule, they use sharp spears when hunting elephants. They hunt in a group. It's impossible to defeat an elephant alone. The pygmies either drive the elephant away from the herd or track down a lone elephant that's wandered away. While the hunters distract the giant, one of the pygmies sneaks up on it and plunges a spear into its belly or leg. The elephant can then be killed on the spot by throwing sharp spears and stones at it. The elephant has to be stabbed with many spears to knock it down, so the fight lasts a long time. Sometimes things can go on for days. The pygmies memorize the wounded elephant, follow it, and exhaust it, injuring the legs of the tired giant. After that, they butcher it, and the meat is dried or roasted. The pygmies do not cook elephant meat. Buffalo Similarly, African hunters deal with buffaloes. They hide in the thicket and wait for a herd of buffaloes. The main task is to chase one giant away from its herd and try to do it so that the others don't notice the disappearance. After all, buffaloes are very friendly and always try to come to the aid of their congeners. Usually, the Aborigines chase away the buffalo running at the end of the herd by throwing spears at them. The throwing technique of the Aborigines is honed to perfection, and the spears are incredibly sharp. So with a couple of well-aimed throws, they can pierce the giant's skin. And then the same thing happens as with the elephant. The buffalo is stuffed with spears, and when the animal weakens, the hunters come closer and finish it off from a comfortable distance. Elephants and buffaloes are tough prey. These animals are large and quite dangerous. But what about hunting a real predator, like the king of the jungle? In this regard, there is no equal to the Maasai tribe, the Aborigines of East Africa. Generally speaking, the Maasai do not hunt lions on purpose. Usually, it comes to hunting when a lion attacks their territory or livestock. The Maasai are very respectful of their livestock, since domestic animals are their breadwinners. Therefore, the Aborigines take vicious revenge on each and every one of them. The Maasai hunt in groups and use spears as a weapon, like almost all other Aborigines. Warriors may hunt as soon as they see a lion or may hunt after it. Sometimes the Maasai hunt from high ground to keep the lion from climbing up, and sometimes they go straight ahead. The Maasai crowd rushes at the lion and throws spears, screaming. If the lion's alone, it will not do well against such a group. The king of the jungle may try to attack the living wall of natives, but it will be met by spearheads. By the way, the Maasai do not eat game meat, so they hunt lions mainly for revenge. Well, or they can take off its mane, tail, and claws, which will become the ornament of hunters. Snakes Not all Aboriginal people use dangerous weapons when hunting. The Aborigines of the Arula tribe, for example, hunt practically with their bare hands. The more surprising fact is that the main object of their hunting is dangerous, venomous snakes. Members of this Indian tribe hunt reptiles not for their skin or meat, but for the valuable venom which is used in their medicine. As is usually the case, the hunt takes place in groups, although sometimes the Arula people hunt singly. They find the burrow in which the snake lives. Then, using a stick or their hands, the natives widen the entrance to the burrow. Soon the snake gets close to the exit. There's nothing left for it but to get out. And then the natives pick it up and put it in a bag. In one day, the Arula people can catch about 15 venomous snakes. By the way, they catch mostly king cobras, the largest venomous snakes on the planet. Of course, even an experienced master can be bitten by a snake, but in this case, the Arula people have an antidote. They make it themselves from dried ground leaves and roots. The Hadza people who live in northern Tanzania hunt in a similar way. The main target of these natives is porcupines. These prickly rodents live in burrows just like snakes, so the principle of Hadza hunting is similar to that of the Arula people. Having found a burrow, the natives first examine it with a stick. If they realize that a porcupine's inside, they widen the burrow and literally get inside. They can hunt with their bare hands or using a short, pointed stick. After a while, an aborigine gets out and a defeated porcupine lies in their hands. However, sometimes the hunter determines the location of the porcupine in the burrow, gets out and makes a second sap so that there's less fuss. 
so the porcupine can be caught without getting inside again. But why hunt porcupines at all? This animal is prickly and obviously not suitable for eating. But the handsome people don't think so. They have become adept at butchering these rodents and cooking them over a fire. As they say, hunting porcupines is also smart. It's much more efficient to spend an hour to get the rodent out of its hole than to wait months for the crop to harvest. Although many tribes still hunt animals, this doesn't mean that they all hate animals. Since ancient times, the aborigines of many tribes have literally prayed to certain animals, and some still honor them today. Stay tuned to learn more about the animals that different aboriginal people consider their deities and patrons. In general, the veneration of animals is called zoolatry or animalism. You all know at least one example of animalism. If you think of cats and the ancient Egyptians, you're right. Cats were revered in Egypt, but not everywhere. For example, the people of Memphis honored the bull. In Edfu and Letopolis, they honored the falcon. But cats were worshipped in Bubastis. Hence the name of the goddess Bast, who was pictured with the head of a cat. Cow As for the present, people of Indian tribes, for example, still venerate the cow. Some aborigines literally worship cows, although the cult of the cow is a feature peculiar to all of India as a whole. The respect that Indians have for these horned creatures is so great that when a cow walks on the roadway, both pedestrians and cars, including police and ambulances, give way to it. Cows walk freely in the streets, and locals feed them when they need the support of a higher power for something important, such as before a surgery or an exam. In addition, cow's milk is considered a particularly pure product and is used in Hindu religious rituals. Snakes Snakes are treated no worse by Indians. Yes, aborigines like Arula catch them and get their venom, but in general, snakes are an object of reverence in India. This attitude towards these reptiles has its roots in religion. Ancient Indians believed in the Nagas, snake-like mythical creatures with the body of a snake and the head of a human. In honor of the Nagas and their closest relatives, the common snakes, temples were built and continue to be built. Snakes are worshipped on the other side of the earth. For example, since ancient times, the Hopi people have considered snakes as symbols of fertility. The Hopi consider snakes their brothers and rely on them to bring their prayers for rain to the underworld, where the Hopi believe the gods and spirits of their ancestors live. Crocodile Crocodiles, despite all their danger, are revered no worse than snakes. Traditions go back to the distant past. Even in the days of ancient Egypt, crocodiles were sacred animals. The Egyptians worshipped Sobek, the ancient Egyptian god of water and the overflow of the Nile, who was associated with crocodiles. The Egyptians believed that he repelled the forces of darkness and was the protector of gods and people. The tradition still persists. Tribes in West Africa consider crocodiles as gods. For example, the Aborigines, as well as the common people of Mauritania, who live side by side with West African crocodiles, protect and preserve them. This is due to their belief that not only crocodiles need water, but the water itself needs crocodiles. So if they disappear, the water will also disappear. Crocodiles are very much revered in Burkina Faso and Ghana. There are even ponds which are home to sacred crocodiles. For the locals, these reptiles are a kind of lie detector. If someone is suspected of cheating, he or she is asked to go to the edge of the pond. The local natives are sure that the crocodiles will definitely pounce on the liar and won't hurt the honest person. Bear Incredible strength, power, speed, unpredictability. These qualities of the bear have been a source of awe and respect for centuries. No wonder that from ancient times bears were revered by many peoples and tribes. Even in ancient Russia was a kind of cult of the bear. The bear is revered in our time, too. For example, the Evenks, the indigenous people of Siberia, worship bear, calling it grandfather or ancestor. Ethnographers have repeatedly observed the Evenks' bear feasts with round dances, songs, and prayers. Many Indian tribes, as well as peoples living in Alaska, are in awe of bears. For all of them, the bear is, if not a deity, then at least a sacred animal. And that's all, guys. Tell everyone about your favorite animal in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.